Scott Hansen here from NFL Red Zone. I hope you're checking out one hour of Five Yard Rush, one of the best podcasts on NFL football in the UK. Good morning, Rush Nation. Here we are. We are getting even more ready. I hope you enjoyed the show last night with me in stocks. I hope you enjoyed the waiver wire pickups. Um, today we're going to do some starts and sits. Um, I only gave people sort of a little bit of notice on this, so I don't have uh, that many to go through. So instead, what I'm going to do is is just go through um, a few things that I've put together. Some players I would say are must starts. Some players that I would say we're considering sitting. Um, I've also written my um, column for fantasy pros for wide receiver matchups uh, against cornerbacks this hasn't published yet but i'm going to go through some of the um selections in in there to to keep an eye on so i'm going to go by position uh first of all and look at players who i say are are players that you want to be starting um this week um to start with when we're looking, you know, there's the must starts, right? So I'm not going to sit here and just name every player you must start because that's pretty obvious. Um, but instead, I'm going to go through and, and sort of just highlight um, the ones that are sort of what we call roster, but not roster bubble, but start bubble. So I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to start Josh Allen. You drafted him as first quarterback off the board in most leagues. So that would be. Um, sort of naive to say so instead i'm going to give you uh players that have sort of advantageous matchups and players if you're sort of on the edge for um then then players you should consider starting so um let's start with the quarterbacks uh in in, in the must start so the must start this week um i would say is uh, there's two uh one is baker mayfield who i talked about in the waiver wire show yesterday so it shouldn't come as as much of a surprise against washington that's a defense that they can easily start to exploit and um i put points on the board for so i think that's going to significantly help um when it comes to you know thinking about a streaming quarterback or if you've got justin herbert you're not sure he's going to go baker mayfield's a pretty good option this week the other one is is matt stafford um Matt Stafford has Detroit. Detroit had the six most most fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Um, and they allowed, you know, a, a very, very healthy uh, amount of points um, last season. I think um, I was reading something about the fact they've given up 25 points on eight or more occasions uh, last season, as well as these two teams did also meet in the playoffs. Uh, and Matt Stafford was highly productive in that. He put up over 20 fantasy points in that game. So, Stafford's a pretty good option to start in week one. I think Detroit will be better on defense this year, but I think St- uh, Stafford has the weapons to, to exploit that. Uh, if you're looking at sort of fringe uh, running backs to start this week, um, Javonte Williams is a, is a really good one. Um, I think for me, with the fact they've cut P. Ryan, I think McLaughlin's going to get some touches, but I think w- Williams is going to be um, going to be the guy. I think you're going to have to look at the way that Sean Payton runs his scheme last season, the Broncos threw to their running backs over 32% of the time. That's quite a big uh, statistic that jumps out there for me. So um, Williams appears to be reasonably healthy, at least better than he has done at any point in his career starting a season, it seems. So other than his rookie season, perhaps. So um, I quite like the idea of Javante Williams this week against Seattle. That, that seems to be a good matchup as well. as also Gus Edwards against the Chargers. Um, I think this is going to be a good game for the Chargers. I think that you would expect them to win this week, especially if they do have Justin Herbert. Um, and I expect them to lead with Gus Edwards. Um, this looks like a, a, a move that will really be fruitful. It's obviously hard to sort of sit here and say how this is going to sort of scheme up from touches, but I imagine we're looking at Gus Edwards being the goal line back, Gus Edwards being the, the the one that's going to be more likely to poke the holes through and be productive. So I like him as a start this week for sure. Um, I love Chris Godwin as a start. And I think it's going to be a really, really, um, really good opportunity for Chris Godwin to start well. So um, the commanders allowed the third most points per game to slot receivers last year. Uh, Chris Godwin is going to have a highly accelerated role in that slot. Um, now that he's got Liam Cohen, you've heard me talk about this all off season. So this shouldn't be a surprise 
that he's a pick for me, but you should be seeing um, seeing him going there because it was the lowest he had the lowest slot rate of his career last year under Canellas because Canellas really schemed a very really basic, simple offense, and Liam Cohen's not going to do that. He's going to expand upon the talent that this roster has. So I think you're going to see um, Godwin go back more to the slot, those intermediate passes, and I think he's going to be the main weapon on Sunday, although Mike Evans also has a very favorable matchup um, in this one. So expect the Buccaneers to go up early and, and, and utilize Chris Godwin to control the game and push down the field. So I imagine it could be a pretty decent day uh, for him. And then I'm, I'm going to pick a get, I'm going to pick a player in the, um, I'm going to pick a player in, in, in the game between uh, the one in Brazil. So between the Packers and the Eagles, and I'm actually going to go with uh, Jaden Reed. Um, I, again, we're talking about a team uh, that's really bad against the slot. The Eagles were by far the worst last season uh, for players giving up points in the slot. Um, they gave up uh, over two points uh, per game more than the next worst team. So really shocking. Um, so I like Jaden Reed on Friday slash Saturday morning. Um, if you're looking for some interest in that game, and that, that's a big thing to remember is this isn't your conventional week one because you've got Thursday night football, then you've got Friday night football. So you have to be a little bit aware when you're doing your lineups. Make sure you don't put your Friday players in your in your flags. Um, some other players when looking at um, wide receivers, and this is going from my column that was picked um, uh, for Fantasy Pros. This should be going out, I imagine, tomorrow. Um, being Thursday, depending on when you're record, when you're watching this. So, uh, players that stand out for me: Rashid Shahid. He's got Troy Hill. Um, I think this is a massive mismatch. I think Shahid could have a really good week one. I think Calvin Ridley against Tyreek Stevenson um, will have a really really good week one. And if you're looking for a really deep sleeper in in your dynasty leagues or in a a really deep league, then Jalen Naylor I've talked about has a really advantageous week uh, matchup in in week one. Um, he's up against Drew Phillips, the rookie. And I think that's a really good opportunity for, for Naylor, especially if Sam Donald probably will be a little bit more conservative week one rather than go uh, uh, throw a load of balls that uh, deep down the field. So I really like those three players. Um, other ones that I think have got really advantageous uh, matchups, and these are all must starts anyway, uh, AJ Brown, Mike Evans, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, and Justin Jefferson are the five that I've highlighted that could have massive week one. So keep an eye on all those five players who have high uh, advantageous uh, matchups. Um, going to the tight end position, and there's two that I, I would recommend starting uh, this week. Um, one is Colby Parkinson. Um, so Colby Parkinson has Detroit, and again, um, you've got this scenario where the Lions do allow a lot of points to tight ends. They were bottom eight in terms of uh, points allowed to tight ends, so the in top eight worst, however you want to view that metric. Um, so that's, again, a good matchup to exploit. And then Noah Fant is another one. I think with the volume, I think he's going to see a really good amount of volume. I've got him touching uh, the top 13, top 14 this week. So both those players, I think, are, are players that can take advantage in, and, and you can really get um, some good production uh, there. Uh, we move to the sits. Um, the the easy sit for me this week is Brock Purdy against the Jets. That is just a really nasty matchup. It's going to be really difficult for um, Brock Purdy to to navigate that. What is probably the worst secondary in football to play against? And then on top of that, you've got Brandon Ayuk, who um, hasn't trained and hasn't been with the team. He's only just come back since signing his contract, so he hasn't had a lot of time and reps. He might be a bit slow to get going. Christian McCaffrey isn't quite 100%. He's missed all the preseason with a calf injury. It looks like he's just returned back to practice. So again, as much as I don't think these guys need loads of practice, there's a timing and rhythm that I think is really difficult. And this is the worst matchup scenario possible for Brock Purdy week one. So really, he's only got a relationship with Kittle and, and, and Debo uh, that he's played with uh, you know, during scrimmages this, this offseason. So... I think it's going to take a bit of time for the 49ers to get in sync and get going. Um, and therefore, I just think this is a, a matchup. If I'm a Brock Purdy owner, I would try and swerve and, and avoid this week. Um, we now have um, this situation. I'm fading both running backs here for the Steelers. I mean, Najee Harris is one that kind of stands out as a player that you would uh, look to to take advantage of and go, okay, well, this might be a decent opportunity. But Jalen Warren is back for week one. 
that's going to really convolute things uh, significantly. And I just think it's a really, really tough uh, matchup. I don't see either of them uh, being inside the top 30 this week. Um, and as a result, I think they're just players I'd rather stay clear of um, in week one. So I would just just be a little careful of, of that one. Um when it comes to the Steelers in particular, I don't think either of them are going to finish inside the top 30 this week. Um, and then you've got Tuba Hubbard, um, Tuba Hubbard against the, the Pam against the saints is a tricky one. Saints are pretty good against the run. Um, I also equate uh, Austin Eckler in this, in this class against the best run defense. Uh, another sit for me would be, um, I talked about this on last night's show would be Jaden Daniels. I forgot him at quarterback. I scrolled through my notes and I totally missed him. Um, we saw what happened last year with Justin Fields. Justin Fields only had three yards rushing uh, against the Bucs. The Buccaneers are a great containment team. Jalen Hurts didn't have that many in the playoff game either. Um, I think this is a really tough ask for, for Jaden Daniels in his first week. So I'm sitting Purdy. I'm sitting Jaden Daniels this week uh, at quarterback. And then, yeah, I'm sitting Eckler this week. I think this is a poor matchup for Eckler. Uh, I think it's a poor matchup for... Hubbard and also for the uh, Philadelphia uh, wide receivers, uh, Philadelphia <laughs> Pittsburgh running backs as well. I absolutely lost my chain uh, this week. If I look at the um, if I look at the wide receivers here, it, it's a tough one. I think Brandon Ayuk is going to struggle this week again. Uh, same reason for Purdy. I think this is a tough. Offense, and I think Debo Samuel is going to be up against Sauce Gardner, which I think is it's really difficult. But at least I think he's going to have volume, and he's probably going to get some some rushing carries that will that will carry him nicely. But I do think that Brandon Ayuk is, is going to struggle a little bit uh, in Week One. I've still got him at sort of the back end of the wide receiver two conversation, but um, so I'm not saying like he's a complete sit, but I think it just temper your expectation uh, slightly there with Brandon Ayuk. Um, other players that have got challenging matchups. Deontay Johnson, I think, for me, is a hard sit against Marshawn Lattimore. Like, you couldn't have asked for a worse matchup week one for Deontay Johnson on a new team. Marshawn Lattimore is one of the best shutdown corners in the league. I think that's a really difficult matchup. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, I'm not sure how. I mean, he's going to play, but I'm not sure how 100% he, he really is. Uh, up against Jalen Johnson, I mean, no no player, no cornerback was targeted less on Roots run against him than Jalen Johnson last year at nine percent, so I think that just means it's going to be really difficult for uh, Deontay Johnson. And he, we know he's a good separator, but even so, it's going to require Bryce Young to be a hundred percent accurate or very accurate. And I just, oh, sorry, Will Levis to be highly accurate to exploit um, Jalen Johnson. I don't think that's a hundred percent the case. And I think that you're going to see Hopkins run a lot of routes as a decoy to get uh, Ripley open her. Um, Ridley Open, who has a, a much better matchup. And then Zay Flowers is a tricky one against Trent McDuffie. I'm, I'm not so sure that I love him as a start this week. I've got him as sort of a low-end wide receiver three, maybe even a flex play. So he's a player I'd consider. It's hard to sit given where you drafted him, and given you might not have better options. But he's a player I'd be sort of marking down ever so slightly. Um, I would also say that uh, other challenge matchups, I talked about Debo Samuel, Tyler Lockett against Riley Moss is one I'd be sitting. Tyreek Hill has a tricky matchup against Ronald Darby, but I think he's he's kind of matchup proof, but it's challenging matchups worth noting. Michael Pittman against Derek Stingley Jr. is going to be a tough matchup, and DJ Moore against Legere Sleed. Uh, Sneed, that's also a really tricky one as well. Um, other players I'd be considering um, sitting this week, I think Raheem Mostert is going to be a tricky one to start this week. I've talked about Austin Eckler. Um, I think um, I think Keenan Allen could be a really difficult one. And I think any of the tight ends for the Bears, Cole Komet and uh, Everett, I think are really, really difficult um, starts this week. And I think if you're looking at potential uh, players who are going to, not necessarily players you should sit, but players you should just temper expectation for, um, I'd be looking at David Njuku, Dallas Goddard, uh, from the tight end position, I'd be looking at Puka Nakua because I'm not sure how entirely healthy he is. Uh, Zeke Elliott for me is a hard, uh, hard sit this week. DeAndre Swift, I think that's a tough matchup. Um, so I'd just be really careful on some of these players as well. And, and don't be surprised if Derek Henry isn't the most productive uh, either. Um, and then Dak Prescott's a tough one. I, I, you have to start him, but I think it's a tough start for him. I got asked the question last night, would I sit that Prescott for Jane Daniels? And I think if Jane Daniels had a better matchup, that's well worth a conversation. But given how um, 
how difficult it is to run against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that's not a, a matchup I'd, I'd fancy. So I think you can get too cute, and I think I'd be starting Dak, but I do think it's a more challenging uh, matchup. So uh, that's going to cover it for the for the, the start sits today. Um, I'd like to think that we've got through uh, a good number, and that should give you a, a good feeling as to as to where we are um, coming coming into the season. Just be very wary of. These fringe players, be worry about your flex. Make sure you're starting the right players in your in your flex. Don't have anyone from uh, Thursday's game or Friday's game uh, in your flex. Make sure they stay Sunday. Make sure you stay fluid. Keep an eye on those injuries. Luckily, so far, there's not too many to keep an eye on. Um, no one too significant. Justin Herbert's the biggest name that we're kind of watching for week one. And if we're looking beyond, uh, if we're looking beyond him, then I would say... Um, Probably players like Marshawn Lloyd, um, both running backs, backup running backs for Green Bay, are questionable going into the week. So, um, so they're kind of about as bad as it gets. There's not that many questionable uh, players as we're coming into week one, luckily. So, it, it's a good place to be. Um, but having said that, still keep an eye out. Uh, on those players. I'm just having a look now. See, I mean, CD Lamb's listed as questionable, but I think he'll play. And um, Romeo Dobbs is, is questionable, but I think we'll see what happens. I don't expect Hollywood Brown to, to play. He's listed, I think, now as doubtful. I'm not entirely sure. But, um, yeah, either way, he, I don't think he will uh, he will play either. So that'll do it for the injuries. That'll do it for the starting sits. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow we'll be back for a bit of a preview on all fantasy-relevant uh, players in all matchups. I'm going to go through my ranks and pull them all up and have them all prepped for you. Um, so it's a big, long laundry list. I'll try and separate them through a little bit with some visual uh, if you're watching the video as well. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, much love to you all and uh, enjoy your Wednesday. And don't forget, as always, keep rushing. <laughs>